Welcome to the American Dream, a show that started right here in San Diego, America's finest city, that now spans positive media all across the country, real stories in real neighborhoods. Hi, I'm your host, Craig Sewing, and here's the American Dream. Welcome to the American Dream, a real show, not a reality show. The real estate, the lifestyle, the culture. It's not just about what you're living in, but the community you're gonna live in. High-rise, luxury living. People are the vehicle, people are the connection, people are the expansion. Helping folks just like you find your dream home. It just never disappoints. Real stories in real neighborhoods with real experts. The opportunity to achieve our biggest goals and aspirations. It's the American Dream! Welcome to American Dream TV. I'm your host, Judy Richardson, and I'm excited to explore with you why so many people call Northern California home. Today, I have a special guest, and right after the tour of his spectacular property, we're going to go right around the corner for a sneak peek, an exclusive look of a beautiful estate that I have coming to the market soon. Come with me as we tour. You may not recognize my guest today because we're not walking on a red carpet and he's not wearing a tuxedo. He's a multi-award winning producer of such hits that I'm sure you'll recognize. The House of Cards and movies like Captain Phillips, The Social Network, and his most recent hit, Gran Turismo. Dana Brunetti, thank you for talking with me today. Thank you, welcome. Thank you, and wow, what a spectacular place you have. Thanks. Look at this barn. This houses your wife and daughter's show horses, is that right? Yes. Can we take a look? Of course. This must be one of your wife's show horses here? Yeah, this is the newest one. His name's uh, Rolex. He just came in from Belgium. Oh my gosh. So Dana, you've lived the past several years in the Los Angeles area working on those productions and other projects, but you recently decided it was time for a change for your family. Yes. What made you come to that decision? This property, when we found it, it was a raw piece of land and it gave us a blank canvas to create exactly what we wanted as opposed to trying to make it fit uh, some somewhere else. Well, it certainly is an oasis. Can we see more? Sure. Well, I will tell you, just looking around, it really seems to me like you're living the American dream. In just a few words, tell me, what does that mean to you and your family, living the American dream? Uh, look around, this this is it. I mean, you can look out and see deer close by. We can look out at our horses in the morning, just having the freedom to pretty much do what we, what we want here. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I'm super grateful that you gave us a tour of your beautiful property. Thanks, Dana Bernetti. Thank you, appreciate it. Coming up next, I'm super excited to show you. I have a property I'm preparing for the market just around the corner from here, and you're going to get an exclusive first look. Follow me. There are so many hidden gems in Northern California. This soon to be offered estate is inspired by a Pennsylvania farmhouse crafted with tons of authentic rock imported from the very region that inspired its design. Let's go take a look. Built in 2012 and sitting on over five acres, this home returns us to a more traditional floor plan, but still focuses on family gathering areas, both inside and out. Imagine your family circled around this beautiful quartzite island, gazing upon your beautiful backyard with these wall-to-wall -wall windows. This custom kitchen is adorned with the most professional appliances that would make any master chef happy. There are far too many amenities on this beautiful estate to mention in this short clip, but there is one area here that I did want to give you a sneak peek at. Look at this beautiful family event center. 
Imagine hosting Thanksgiving, Christmas, or even weddings. It opens to the spacious backyard and just superb. I hope you enjoyed learning why so many people love calling Northern California their home. And stay tuned for the official launch of this most amazing estate where history meets modern luxury, sophistication, and elegance. Until then, I'm Judy Richardson, your host for American Dream TV. Welcome to the American Dream TV. I'm Darcy Stratton. This is Taffy Maurer. We have you in our hometown today in Loomis, California. We can't wait to show you around. Loomis is a small town in Northern California, in the, uh, just outside of Sacramento, and it has that amazing family feel to it. Because they say a small town is like a family, and that's what Loomis is. We can't wait to have you see all the business owners, feel the love and the vibe of the community, and we're going to go show you all around the High Hand Nursery right now. Come with us. Today we are here at High Hand. We're with the owner, Scott. He's owned it for over 20, 20 plus years. 20 plus years. This place is legendary. It's iconic. People come from far just to have the experience that Scott's created. I've known Scott for a long time and I always have felt and admired that he, anything that he kind of envisions and attracts, amazing things happen. You know, at the nursery, we added the restaurant a few years later. We added the indoor area, took over and just kept growing through the building, art galleries, all the oil stores. Uh, mercantile gift shops, um, stage area for uh, concerts and different venues, uh, entertainment, uh, places for uh, events, and then obviously the brewery this year that was added uh, October of last year. Okay, so describe the experience. So as you're walking through, what are people feeling? What do you envision them? Because you want them to leave here and it, it keeps pulling them back. So what is all the things? Um, you know, it never started off as this is what it was going to be. Okay. Um, because I don't think it's a place that, for me to be here for so many years, um, it needs to be a place that um, motivates me. It needs to be a place that inspires me, Yeah. right? So uh, for me, I want people to be able to come, enjoy, and leave a little bit haunted. You know, the measure of a garden is in the way that it haunts you after you've left it. So High Hand is really about that. I wanted to create a place that was um, a destination, something that was interactive and experiential. Mm -hmm. And this encompassed that. People have different experiences here because there's so many different things to do. But I just want people to just come here and just feel a little bit haunted when you've left. I love it. I wanted to ask you, what's next? for high harm. What's next? It's really passion driven more than it is practically driven, exactly. right? And I think passion for us, we're very comfortable with making passion-based uh, decisions that are not fear-based decisions right. within our business. And right. so with that, we just, we just drive towards the, what makes people feel the way they feel. It takes more than a person like me to build a business, you know? Uh, behind me, and I would say in front of me, are really bright, enthusiastic, passionate people that love their jobs, love their work, and I personally could not do any of this without them. Hope you have enjoyed the tour of our little town of Loomis. We are anchored here by two packing sheds, fruit packing sheds, and we're gonna take you to the next one. This is Gander Tap House, owned by a local family. Come on with us. This is Nate Peters. He and his wife, Kim, own Gander Tap House, this lovely, amazing, family-friendly place that we all love to come hang out Friday, Saturdays, play trivia on... Wednesday night. Wednesday night. And thank you for bringing this to our town. Oh, of course. We appreciate you. And so what's your favorite thing about the Loomis community? Uh, being in a small town is a little bit different than being in the large town. Um, actually, currently in the restaurant right now, there's people who I've watched them. They, they were, came in pregnant, now they have a five-year-old child <laughs> running around here. Yeah. It is. Loomis is like a family. How have you made this family friendly? 
So when we first decided to open this up, that was the main goal. Yeah. We were okay. in our, so we've been here for five years. So actually we tried to get this 11 years ago, Okay. Um, but lifetime finances weren't there. So it was like, yeah, we're walking away. Yeah. Um, the building came back up for an opportunity to rent and we said, let's bring the same idea back. And uh, just knowing that this is a community of yeah. 30 something, 40 something year old families. Wait, let's do a toast. Let's All do right. that. And the toast is, boom, boom, a living the Loomis life. I love Cheers. it. From the shed Cheers. to shed experience, right? Right Cheers, here guys. on Taylor Raptors. Cheers. Thanks, Nate. We hope you enjoy the tour of our amazing little town here in Lewis. We have immense pride for this great community. This town has such rich history. We hope you got a taste of that rich history, and we hope we'll see you next time on American Dream TV. My name is Darren DeSilva with the DeSilva Realty Group, and we're right in the heart of the San Joaquin Valley, just outside the East Bay area. And as a proud San Joaquin local and National Association of Realtors 30 Under 30 award winner, I am thrilled to showcase Tracy, California. And today we're going to be interviewing a business owner of a local Tracy establishment who had a dream and built it, but then life had other plans and took it right away. Only through adversity was she able to find it within herself to rebuild her dream, and this time with the right people to help. Here we are at Chapter 2, a beacon of culinary delight in Tracy. This isn't just a restaurant, it's a story of determination, community spirit, and of course, fantastic food. Well guys, I have a treat for you today. So here is the owner of Chapter Two, Heather Smitty. And when I reached out to the community looking for potential people to interview um, and share their story, share the struggles that um, some of the, the, the local business owners have gone through in order to thrive in their business, there was about 30 different people that all mentioned Heather. In the face of all the challenges you face, what caused you to open up Chapter 2 and what did you face before, before doing that? So my story started several years back. I was engaged to somebody, we had a restaurant together, he passed away and it was a snowball and everything just went away at that point. Um, very rapidly I found myself with nothing and um, I found myself at the place where I was like, okay, what am I gonna do with myself? Like I have four kids and I'm by myself and I don't have any family here and I gotta start over again. Like I can't just stop, so what do I do? Um, it was at that point I'm like, all right, so I have to change my outlook on this. And I thought, all right, I get to start over again. Cause how many times in life do you ever get to start over? And so, at that point in my life, you know, when I had, when I was restarting over, I was like, well, what, what do you know and what do you love? And I'm like, I can't imagine doing anything else long-term than waiting tables. So I'm like, well, what if I opened my own restaurant? Like, what if it, I worked for myself and I can wait tables as long as I can wait tables. And then when I'm too old to wait tables, then I just go and visit with people and let the young folks wait tables. You know, and that was, that was where it all started. So, wow, you know, that's incredible. And, um, you know, that kind of leads me to my next question is how, how did the support of the Tracy community help impact your business now and help you um, essentially have what, what the name of your establishment's called in chapter two, right? The, the next chapter in your life. I honestly wouldn't have this restaurant if it weren't for our community. Left and right, people started coming out of the woodwork to lend a hand. You know, like you look around this place, or I look around this place, and I and I see the different things. You know, like even the bar, right? Like the bar is made out of some doors that somebody brought that were going to be um, thrown in the trash, and we could transform it into something else. Like the metal that's on the bar, it's from somebody's backyard. The lodge down the street, the Moose Lodge, shut their doors and put a sign on their door that said, anybody that was coming to the Moose tonight, meet us down at Chapter 2 because really? we have 
a community to support. We have a business to support. Oh my gosh. So, wow. though I don't know where the future leads, I don't have any intentions of up and going anywhere, but I will say that no matter what happens, I am forever grateful for the community that's helped me make it this far because <laughs> I couldn't have done it without them. Wow. You know, and that's really inspiring to me just to know that Tracy is such a tight-knit community like that, you know, and, and that's still out there now in this world, in this day and age yeah. where everybody's on the phone and, and really, you know, about themselves to, to be reminded that there are a lot of good people that care about the community and, and are willing to help Absolutely. people when they're down. It's, it's, it's very inspiring. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Heather. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm Darren DeSilva with the DeSilva Realty Group, and witnessing the unity and spirit of Tracy has been an absolute honor. Thank you for joining me on this incredible journey through Tracy's vibrant streets and stories. And remember, it's not just about where you live, but how you live and the stories you create. Until next time, embrace your community and keep writing your own unique story. I'll see you soon. I'm Donna Judah. This is my daughter and real estate partner, Wendy Olson. And we're, we're here, here to welcome you to the American Dream. And today we're standing in front of the Lincoln Brand Grain Building. This brick, beautiful, gorgeous building has been here for over 130 years. And now it currently houses shops, services, and restaurants. It also houses the clubhouse for the Kiwanis Club of Lincoln, which has gotten over a million dollars saved up over the last 20 years to give to the kids in this community. So if you like to shop and eat like we do, then this is the place for you. Let's go on upstairs to the Lincoln Speakeasy Tap Room. Here we are. Thanks, Wendy. You're welcome. Wow, this place is great. Isn't it? This Lincoln Speakeasy Tap Room offers casual dining with wine, beer, and spirits. They even distill their own rum and brandy. And it's delicious, I can tell you. You should also try the flatbread. It's a margarita flatbread with pesto. It's so good. And you can just hang out and relax, go play a game of pool, sit at this gorgeous bar, or you can just listen to music on Friday and Saturday nights because they have live bands here. Let's go downstairs and see what's cooking with Chef Daniel of Bonarotti's Restaurant. We're just so happy to be here and right see on. this fabulous right, restaurant. Right. I have a question. Sure. Do you want How did you come up with the name Bonarotti? I Bonarati? came up with the name Bonarotti because Bonarotti was Michelangelo's last name. As you can tell, my restaurant is full of uh, paintings for the G Sixteen Chapel and, and the two hands, you know, and my family has always loved Michelangelo. So when we decided to name the restaurant, my dad kept saying, well, call him Michelangelo, but there was another restaurant called Michelangelo in downtown so you couldn't use it. So we name it after his last, last name, which is Bonorotti. In Italian, means good fortune too. So something That's smells true. really good. Today I'm making red sauce. I made a bowl of chapino. They will have uh, shrimp and mussels and clams and salmon and lobster legs. We make all, all the stuff here. We make our own butter. We bake our own wow. bread. Pretty much make everything from scratch. So That's great. That's why it looks so old, because I got to work my buns off here. <laughs> But anyway. So Daniel, what is your special tonight? Tonight, uh, we're gonna do eggplant parmesan. Usually don't do it in winter time because it's a seasonal thing, but uh, sometimes people call me and say, hey, can you have eggplant tonight? So that's what I'm gonna do, eggplant. That's uh, great. I did cook the chapino, as you guys know. It's chapino with crab legs, and it has mussels, clams, shrimp, uh, fish. We really don't specialize one type or region of food from Italy, so we cook. Northern Italy has a lot of white sauces. South Italy has a lot of red sauces. But some 
some of the recipes are my mom, my grandparents. Some of them are mine. When I went to school, I created a bunch of it. And so I combine between recipes from my family and recipes that I created. We do use fresh chicken, fresh fish, fresh meats and we make everything from scratch. Basically, you come here and we cook that dish. We don't pre-make the food and, and so it's made to plate order. it, we make that's it great. to order. I think so that's so important. Sometimes uh, the sauces might fluctuate a little more runny and less runny, but because we cook everything to order. Yeah, that's great. I mean, to tell you that this building also is, uh, it was a perfect building for building my restaurant. At, uh, I've been here 21 years. These buildings were built in 1884. I believe they start building these buildings. The walls are original, the floor is original. The walls are 16 inches thick. It was perfect because of the history of Michelangelo and, and things like that. So those beams are to enforce the building because they were built in the 1800s. But just about everything here, I could not throw walls down. A lot of history, a lot of, a lot sure. of things been through these, the first three buildings here. It's, they've been around for a long, long time, so. Daniel, we really appreciate your time today. Thanks oh, for this. Pleasure. Thanks for I'm this so, delicious I'm so, food. I'm so glad to wine. see you, and uh, yeah, let everybody know that we're here. Thank you. Salute. See you next time. Thank you, yeah. On the American, American Dream. Dream. Hello, Daniel Sosa, your finance expert with the American Dream, and welcome to the city of Lodi, famously known as the great capital of California. This area has quickly become the destination for both visitors and homeowners alike because we're surrounded by over 80 wineries. And today I'm gonna to introduce you to a local realtor by the name of Taylor Kinnanmonth. And together we're gonna to preview this wonderful vineyard, Oak Farm Vineyards. And after we're done with that, Taylor's gonna show you what modern farmhouse country living looks and feels like right here in the Central Valley. So come on, let's go check it out. Taylor, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it so much. And I've got to congratulate you on all of your newfound success as you've quickly become an expert in this area, especially when it comes to all things wine and country. So I've got to ask, how did you transition into real estate? You know, I was born and raised in Lodi and my original career was in the wine industry here. My passion for real estate really came in wanting to showcase all that Lodi has to offer. We have a very quaint community. We have that nice boutique farm feel where we have a neighbor that'll bring you some farm fresh eggs and this farm stands on all the corners. Mm -hmm. But then we also have those upscale amenities that come with a wine region, like spas, um, you know, farm to table dining, olive mills, and of course these beautiful wineries. Yes, it's so beautiful and I can't wait to check this out. Are you excited? I am. All right, let's go take a look. Dan and Heather, thank you so much for allowing Taylor and I to view this beautiful vineyard today. Hey, we're happy to have you. Thank, thank you for you. coming. This property is so beautiful. There's so much charm that you can't help but feel all of the history embedded right here in its roots. Would you mind sharing more about that? Sure. I mean, we're this place has been called Oak Farm since the mid 1800s. Um, and uh, the house that we live in, for example, on the property here is built in 1876. Um, there's so there's a lot of rich history uh, going back a long time and we're just trying to give that same sort of uh, thing going on with the new generation just really having fun with it so yeah it's it's so unique here and in a city with a population just over 75,000 as you know we're surrounded by over 80 wineries what has been your differentiator it's mainly that we have this ability to have people throughout the property and have it still feel sort of intimate and not like everybody's on top of each other. Um, and I, I would say uh, that and that we offer quite a wide variety of different uh, wines that, that people can taste. I mean, w would you agree that that's? Yeah, I definitely think also too people come here for the, the charm and it's a beautiful estate. So we offer estate tours, tastings. Yeah. Um, they get to uh, enjoy different sitting areas and viewpoints as they uh, hang out on the property also too. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to join you today. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely, Absolutely. thanks for coming. Now that we've seen what Oak Farm Vineyards has to offer our local community, let's take a few minute drive down to Acampo where we're gonna show you what a modern farmhouse looks like. Follow me.
Taylor, thank you so much for allowing us to view this beautiful farmhouse. Thanks for coming out. In your opinion, why do you think people are coming to the Lodi and surrounding areas? What do you think makes it so unique and desirable? Well, isn't it unique that we can go over to a winery about five minutes down the road, pick up a bottle of wine, and then come and enjoy it in this modern farmhouse with our friends later on? For sure. I'm excited to check this out. You ready? Let's go. All right. Constructed in 2001, this home was ideally situated on this five acre lot with optimal vineyard sunset views in mind and perfect indoor lighting. And what would a farmhouse be without chickens and garden beds? And this soil is fertile. We produce about 40% of California's wine grapes. This home was curated with exquisite woodwork, ceramic and quartz finishes, and bespoke cabinetry, really adding to its inviting comfort and charm. Thank you for joining me and my friends on this journey through Lodi's wine country. I hope that you got to see a glimpse of what Lodi has to offer in not only its beautiful landscapes, but in the spirit of its people. Cheers to new and old friendships as well as shared stories, as I hope that our paths cross again right here on the American Dream. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show, produced from America's finest city, but shot in the heart of your neighborhoods. Don't forget positive media when the world really needs it. Follow us on social media at the American Dream TV. See you next time. In the meantime, cheers to your American dream.